Welcome back. Last time we set up this where we can give this some kind of name and then we can give it an amount. And then when we hit enter or click the button, it errors out. And the reason that's happening is because we've submitted here to the dashboard itself. And this dashboard action is handling any actions submitted by forms to this page. Now what's happening is it's looking in the form data and it's looking for something with the name of username as one of the inputs. The only problem is the form we're submitting doesn't have that username input. So all of this is just set to undefined. And so because of that, it's saying, hey, undefined is not valid JSON. So when it comes down here and it tries to get that from our loader function right here, it's saying, hey, I can't find anything. All it says is undefined. And now it's trying to JSON.parse it and you can't JSON.parse an undefined item. So what do we do with that? Well, first of all, I gotta come in here and clear that out so that we can actually see anything. And you can see that's exactly what it's done. It saved it. Now with each of these forms being submitted, we've got form data that's connected to the form itself. So what we can do is actually figure out for each individual form that's being submitted to any given route, what properties exist on that form. So for instance, I could filter and say, hey, does it have username? So I could do a little if statement here that says, if it has username, then do this. However, now I have to do that for each individual thing, but there's actually a different way I found I enjoy working with these forms that makes it a little bit more uniform across the board. So rather than having to remember each individual thing that exists on a form and making sure I never name something the same way, instead what I can do is have a hidden input, and that's what I want to show you now. So let me show you instead of tell you. Let's go back to our intro, and we're going to actually add something special here. You can see here we've got our input with the name of username. That's what we were just looking at a second ago, but I actually want to add one more input right here. Now this is going to be the type of hidden, and this is a type that you can give any input, and this will hide it on the page. However, what we can do is name it something. So I can name it whatever my action happens to be. And the convention I've stumbled upon is an underscore action. And actually the creator of React Router DOM, I watched some things he did. This is what he did, and it really clicks with me. If every form I submit has this name underscore action, then I always know to look for it and figure out what I should do. And then I can simply pass a value here of whatever the action happens to be. In this case, it'll be new user. Now, how do I actually use that? Well, if I come back over to the dashboard, right up here, I can not only grab the form data, and here I'm gonna spread these in and call them values, but I can also make sure I extract from here the action. So let me go ahead and grab all of this and just comment it out so I can show you exactly what we're getting back here. So I'm gonna grab this right here and we'll console.log the action. So I'm extracting the action and then just spreading in the rest of the values that don't include the action. Now, if I come over here and I open up my console and I type in something like Chris and hit enter, now I see the action is called new user. Now here you can see that this is uh, spazzing out on us. That's all right, we're gonna handle that later. But now at least I know what action I'm looking for. Now what I can do is just create use cases for each of those. So I can say you new user um, submission. This will just be if underscore action. If this equals new user, then go ahead and do all this stuff. So I'll just grab this and drop it in right here. Now if I resave this and I come in here and I say, Chris, it should handle that just fine. Now, the problem here is that I actually kept form data here where this needs to be values dot username. So let's try that again since I changed the name of that. And it looks like I just changed it on the toast message. So one more time, values here as well. Come over here, Chris, and now it should go ahead and submit that form. So uh, since I changed the name of this and just spread in the values as an object, I need to actually change this from form data to values. Okay, so now we've got it handled for this. Now what I can do is just for each use case, for anything hitting this exact endpoint, I can actually tell it, here's what I want you to do for this individual use case. First of all, though, we need to add that same hidden input on our add budget form. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'll just do it just above the button. That's where I typically do it. Input like this, and this will be a type of hidden. And then the name here will be underscore action. Now you do actually need to use this underscore because the way forms were written way back in the day, if you do uh, just plain action, it'll actually read it as form.action. And so it will actually try to submit it to that. So anyhow, long story made short, just use the underscore there to make sure that you're not kind of creating problems for yourself. This will be value, and we'll just call this create budget. So whenever I create the budget, now I want to be able to handle this. So let's save this, come back over to the dashboard, and now we'll just add another condition. So if underscore action equals create budget, then here's what I want to do. Now what I ultimately want to do is save a new budget to my local storage. But to do that, I want to actually write a helper function that will do all this for me, abstract it out in my helpers.js file. So we'll basically create a budget here, create budget, and then we'll show a success message. So I'll return a toast. If I click enter, that should import that up top, dot success. 
I'll say budget created. Otherwise, I want to catch my error and I'll throw a new error that will simply be something like there was a problem creating your budget. Now for right now, just to make sure this is working, let's go ahead and throw an error. We'll just say something like, I don't know, you failed or whatever. This is not going to get passed in anyhow because this error is just going to be caught right here. All right, so if I come over here and now I say whatever and whatever and I hit enter, now it'll say there was a problem creating your budget. But what that tells us is that it is actually picking up on this action and it is throwing this custom error rather than this one. So it knows which form we're submitting based on this action name that we passed in earlier. Now let's actually create the budget we mean to create. So I'm going to come over to my helpers.js file and let's see, let's go up here and we'll say create budget. And here, let's go ahead and we're just going to write this as an arrow function called create budget. And it's going to take in a few things. And whenever I have several things that are passed into a budget, I like to pass in an object just to make it a little bit cleaner. So we'll have both a name and an amount. We'll use those below. So the very first thing I want to do inside of this function is create a new kind of base budget. So this will be the same for all of them. We'll say a new item. We'll give this an ID. And I just want this to be a random number or random string. So there's a couple ways we could do this. You could do the old math.random, but there's actually a crypto API baked into JavaScript. So if I do crypto.random UUID, it'll actually give me a random UUID automatically. So let's do that. That'll be a little bit better. And then the name will be whatever name I passed in. So I could just do that as well, but let's just keep it clean. So like this, just to make sure you understand what's going on here. And then we're going to do a created at. And for this, we'll just do date.now. This will give us our epoch time, so the, the number of milliseconds, I think it is, from like January 1st, 1970. And then we're going to have our amount. And this will be whatever amount we passed in. Now, by default, it will be a string. So we can convert this in a bunch of different ways, like doing number. But you can actually just do like plus amount, and that should work as well. So it'll coerce it into a number. Now, let's put a placeholder here because I do actually want a color here as well. So I'm going to comment that out. We'll come back and do that in a second. However, the first thing I want to do is see if I already have budgets that exist. So I can use a function we've already created called fetch data. So I'm going to say const existing budgets equals fetch data. And the key I want to pass in is budgets. So it's going to use this right up here and look for anything that has budgets. Now, there may be nothing there like right now. And so if that's the case, I actually want to pass back or return an empty array. Now, this nullish coalescing operator will basically say if it's null or undefined, then instead of that, give me this. And that's what I want. So either give me the budgets if they exist or give me an empty array. And then finally, I'm going to return local storage dot set item. And the item I want to set is budgets. And the value will be JSON dot stringify. And first, I'm going to spread in my existing budgets. If they happen to be there, it might just be an empty array. But assuming that there's something there, and then next, I'll pass in my new item. I guess we could call this a new budget as well, but that should work. So now whenever I submit this form, I want to actually pass in here a name and an amount and then add this to my local storage. So let's go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back and we'll add in this color function. So if I come back over here, now what I want to do is create budget. And if I start to type this, there it is right there. I can pull it in. Now this needs two things, and you can see that the kind of type safety inside of VS Code is already telling me it's the name and an amount. Where am I going to get this name from? Well, it should come from the form, and I can get it from the value of whatever this named field is. So you might remember that I've got those all set to values. That's what we did right up here. So we said, give me the action extracted from the values, and then give me everything else as an object called values. So it's values dot new budget. So that was the name property we gave this input right here. Below here, then we had an amount. And this was values dot new budget amount. Now, just to make sure that this pulled everything in where I want it to, yep, right here, we got create budget and fetch data. So those are the two helpers we're using in this file. So let me pull up this application over here. We're going to look at this storage, and we should get a budgets written out here. So I could say like budget one or whatever for $123. I hit enter, and there we go. So you can see here what it first did is check to see if we had any budgets. We didn't, so it just added it in. And we've got a bunch of different things in here. We've got the amount as a number like we wanted to. That's why we added that little plus sign. We've got our epoch time, the amount it was the time it was created at. This needs to be created at, so we'll change that in a second. We've got our UUID. We've got our name. So all those things came in. Now let's go ahead and delete this because we're going to change around a couple things. First of all, I want this to be created at, and then I also want to add a color. Now we're going to get this from a function we're going to write up above called generate random color. And then let me go ahead and just create that at the very top of the documents. So we'll say like generate, well, it should be clear enough. All right, it's called generate random color. So we'll say const generate random color. 
And here I want to take advantage of the way that you can do multiplication on an HSL color function. So the first thing I want to figure out is how many budgets currently exist. And I'll show you why in a second. So I say const existing budget length. This will be equal to, once again, my fetch data function that we wrote below. And I just want to fetch anything with the key of budgets. In this case, there'll be nothing there. So the length will be zero. But if there is, I want to see what that length is. Otherwise, again, using that nullish coalescing operator here, I just want to pass in zero. So it'll either be zero or whatever the length of the array happens to be. Then I want to use that to return a string. So this will be a template string where I will take in my existing budget length and I will multiply it times. And I just kind of figured out a, a value that worked for me. This will be the H, the hue of that HSL value. Then I want all of them to be 65% on the saturation and 50% on the lightness. Now, if you're looking carefully, you'll notice that this is not HSL. It's not wrapped in HSL, at least. And that's because of the way I wrote my CSS. In the next video, I'll kind of talk through a little bit of that, even though I'm trying to avoid CSS where I can here. All right, so now this should be appended as one of the different properties on this new item. So let's do this one more time, and we'll just go ahead and hit Create. And you see here, this is what we've got. So there's our color. And if I were to do another one, now, notice this is not clearing yet. We'll have to take care of that later. Another one here should be 34, yeah. And then the next one would be up from that, et cetera, et cetera. So here we are created at the ID, the budget name, the budget amount, all that is set up here for us. Now there's a couple of UX things we need to pay attention to. You'll notice first of all, that this is not clearing. Second of all, assuming that you're submitting to a database or something like that, usually you'd hit create and it would take a little bit of time for you to get something back. So you might want to disable this button in the meantime. You also might want to show some kind of UI that shows, hey, we are submitting this and then show a message depending on what happens. Well, all that is what we're going to do in the next video, kind of some of these UX improvements, and then we'll get around to displaying the budgets below.